Hello there guys, RMP792 here. Right, yesterday I talked about probably the oldest race in the galaxy, the Necrons, and while talking about them I mentioned the Orcs, which is another logical uh, place to go to. Now, the Orcs are once again based on one of the fantasy, on one of the races from Warhammer Fantasy, the Dwarves. Nah, I'm kidding, it's the Orcs, of course it is. It's spelt differently though, it's spelt with a K rather than a C. Um, <laughs> And it is a running joke in 40k that the orcs can't spell things. Which is how you end up with their primary units being boys, spelled B-O-Y-Z. You know, their primary weapons being shooters, spelled S-H, as many O's as they feel like, T-A-Z. And their uh, big thing being the WA, which is spelled with W-A, as many A's as they feel is appropriate, G-H. So the Orcs are kind of an odd race in that I mentioned last time that they were basically created by the Old Ones. That is very true. They were created as cannon fodder to all intents and purposes and they're damn near impossible to kill. Well, they're actually very difficult to kill. Well, they're not that difficult to kill on an individual level. On a species-wide level, they're very, very difficult to eradicate. Because Orcs are actually fungus. That's why they're green. I'm deadly serious, the Orcs are actually a fungus-based race. And the thing about them is that when an Orc dies, it releases a cloud of spores, which will eventually, you know, grow new Orcs. Which basically means the only way to exterminate them properly is to set them on fire. And the entire area on fire. And possibly the entire planet on fire. Eradicating a complete Orc population is extremely difficult. Because orcs biologically need to fight. That's the way they were built. Which means that as an orc fights, he gets bigger, he gets stronger, he gets smarter. So a young orc will be, you know, anywhere from sort of three or four foot tall, you know, to the height of your sort of average human. A uh, mature orc who's killed a lot, you know, and there is no upper limit on how big an orc can get as far as we know. Um, but you know, a, a fully mature orc who's been killing all his life will quite happily reach sort of ten, fifteen feet tall. Those guys tend to end up becoming war bosses, where they basically rally a whole bunch of weaker orcs to them, and then they go out and go and try and kill someone. And orcs are constantly infighting with each other. You know, it takes a war boss to keep them in line. If there was ever a war boss that could unite the entire orc species the galaxy would be buggered. And as I said last time, that's kind of the motto of the 40k universe on occasion. The fact that they spend more time fighting each other than they do fighting anybody else is the only reason that the Imperium's still standing. Because, as I said, the Orcs need to fight. If they don't fight, they kind of wither away. And, you know, that, that's kind of a bad thing for an Orc. They, you know, they love fighting, and, as I said before, they are the only race in the galaxy with the possible exception of the Tyranids, who don't come from the galaxy. I'll, again, Tyranids, talk about them later. They are the only race in the galaxy who do not have their own version of the Grim Reaper, because orcs don't fear death. You know, they don't particularly want to die, but they don't fear it either, which is how can you get orcs charging in with reckless abandon. You, you, you get orc storm boys who have the most primitive rocket packs imaginable strapped to their backs, just leaping straight into the enemy and trying to kill them. And they love it. They love fighting. They love war. They love killing. And the average orc can more than happily take the average guy in a hand-to-hand -hand fight. But the most interesting thing about the orcs is that they are all a little bit psychic. Not much. Just a very small amount. There are some exceptions. There are weird boys who are full-on orc psychers. But all orcs have a very minor psychic ability. And that leads to a kind of gestalt thing. And the result of that is that orc beliefs have a habit of being true. At least as far as they're concerned. If enough orcs are together and believe a thing, that thing will actually be true. So the classic example of this is all orcs believe that things that have been painted red go faster. And if enough of them are there and enough of them believe it, the things they paint red will drive faster. There's actually a rule for orcs in the game called red ones go faster or something like that. 
which actually does give a speed boost to any orc truck or something like that that's painted red which is kind of fabulous I, I i really love that idea i mean imperial scholars who've sort of found orc guns and broken them apart to just see how they work have often found that they're basically just gun shaped things you know that that should not fire but because the orcs believe they will they do yeah or orc technology shouldn't work not even slightly but because they believe in it it does it, it's kind of the express it's kind of the perfect expression of faith to all intents and purposes. You know, their technology is primitive as hell. But it works because they believe in it. They have faith in it. And they know with unerring certainty that it'll work. And so it does. Uh, orc battle tactics tend not to be terribly subtle. They tend to basically involve getting a whole bunch of guys together and charging the enemy. There are exceptions to that. There are certainly orc war bosses who are smart as w smart's the wrong word. Cunning. Cunning is the right word. Yo, know, they are intelligent enough to you know, use ambushes, use traps, use flanking forces, and that kind of thing. But you could never exactly hold down an intelligent conversation with an orc. There's a reason why they're often used as cat's paws by races like the Eldar. You know, if the Eldar want to slow something down, they'll often use the Orcs to do it, because it's not that difficult to manipulate an Orc into going somewhere, provided you point out that, yeah, there's going to be some good fighting and some good looting and some good shooting there. And, yeah, that, that that's kind of it. There's no female Orcs, incidentally, in case you're wondering. In fact, technically, there aren't male Orcs. As far as they are a genderless species, but given their size and their sort of tend to be deep, gravelly voices, the, uh, you know, male definition works best but you know they are they are a genderless species you know so if you're trying to insult uh, an orc by claiming he has uh, small genitals they don't have genitals at all despite what fan art will try to tell you yeah d do not ever google 40k fan art it's not good for your sanity <laughs> but um yeah so the orcs as a species are kind of fascinating because as they were created by the old ones to be sort of foot soldiers and warriors and they refer to the old ones as the brain boys <laughs> yeah which is an interesting way of doing it and they're constantly on the lookout for the most the uh, the best fight they can find they love going up against the imperium or at the very least they love going up against the space marines because at least there is you know th that's a proper fight against them space marine boys you know, them Imperial Guards boys is weak, but them Space Marine boys, them's is hard. And as I say, they, they loot st You know, what are their uh, best battle tanks? It's just a tank they've nicked from the Imperium and painted red so it goes faster. And, uh, you know, that, you know th that works for them. You know, th all Orc technology is maintained by mech boys, and mech boys are basically these guys who... Again, I'm not even going to say they understand what they're doing, but on a genetic level, they actually know how to keep their technology running. Insofar as all technology runs in the first place, it's it, yeah. You know, they can maintain and repair stuff. Building new stuff is always difficult, but half the time they either just nick it or it works because they think it will. So, and they also really like using Space Hulks. Space Hulks are... When a ship gets lost in the warp and its crew is killed, there is a there is this weird thing that has a habit of happening. They have a habit of coming together. Multiple lost ships will sort of meet up in the warp and kind of smash together. And you know, that'll happen time and time and time and time again until you end up with massive space hulks that are basically to all intents and purposes they're a small fleet that's just crashed together. And you can get from sort of one bit to another by sort of open airlocks and things like that. And you can, and orcs have been known to inhabit space orcs and actually turn them into massive raiding ships. Yeah, you know, we saw this in Battlefleet Gothic Armada. The uh, orcs' main base was a space hulk. Because the only spaceships the orcs tend to build for themselves rather than nicking and or you know, just cobbling together from whatever spare parts they've got are rocks. And that is spelled R-O-K-S because as we've established, orcs can't spell worth a damn. And 
rocks are basically exactly what they sound like. They are asteroids with a couple of engines slapped to them. And they use those to get to, you know, whatever planet they're trying to invade, and they'll just they'll crash into the planet at high speed and then just swarm out from them. You know, that, that's pretty much what happened in Warhammer 40k Space Marine. You had the planet Gryo, which was an Imperial Forge world, and a whole bunch of Orc rocks just smashed through the defences and then started wrecking things. And that's... The Orcs are a plague. Let's be clear about this. The Orcs are very much a, a plague upon the galaxy that is damn difficult to eradicate. And if it wasn't for the fact that they kill each other more than they kill anybody else they would probably have been able to conquer the galaxy. But the problem is, once they conquered the galaxy, they wouldn't have a bloody clue what to do with it. They'd just go around killing each other. And the the orcs actually have two gods, Gork and Mork. And I can't remember which way around it is. I think Gork is brutal but cunning, and Mork is cunning but brutal. But I can't remember if that's the right way around or not. It could well be the other way. But let's be honest, it doesn't really matter. A, lo you know, a lot of people reckon that Gork and Mork are basically just the same deity, just with a slightly different name. But every so often, an orc, you know, particularly an orc war boss, will think they've got a vision from Gork and Mork that basically says, oh, we're going to go to this planet, we're going to do this thing, and it's going to be awesome. And that usually leads to a full-on war. And a war, which, as I said earlier, is spelled W as many A's as you feel like, G-H, and should always be pronounced Wah! is um, sorry, sorry is basically the orcs main method of waging war they get a whole bunch of boys together a, a frankly ridiculous amount you basically need a critical mass of orcs for it to actually become a true war but once you've got that you smash straight into the enemy with everything you've got no subtlety, no finesse just overrun them and there are very few things in the galaxy that can actually stand up to a full orc war and you know, and come out of it without losing the planet. Some, you know, sometimes they can get away with it. There was an orc war on a uh, space marine homeworld at one point, which got repelled with massive casualties, but they held because they're bloody space marines. And is it the wars of? Yeah, there have been multiple wars on a planet called Armageddon, because of course you name a planet that. Um, which included Orc Titans. And Orc Titans are just massive constructs of metal and, and God knows what else that, again, shouldn't work, but do. You know, and they, they just stride across the battlefield and, and smash everything. And the Wars for Armageddon, they had something like a couple of billion casualties in each one. So Orc Wars tend to be very nasty. And, again, Orc melee weapons do more damage than they should because they think they will. Orc choppers, you know, which is your basic grade orc war axe, cleaves through armour like it's not even there. Because as far as the orcs are concerned, it might as well not be. You know, so one orc, not particularly dangerous. A whole slew of them, that's a problem. Because, you know, because the more of them there are, the stronger their belief is that they can win, and the harder it is to overcome that, even with you know, good battle tactics and, and insanely powerful firepower. You know, especially because once your planet's been invaded by orcs, the odds are you're going to have orcs there for you know, the, re the rest of time, pretty much, because they're damn near impossible to exterminate permanently. You might never have a massive full-scale invasion again, but your Imperial Guard are going to want to be on the lookout for anything. You know, there's a reason why a lot of the tactics involving fighting orcs basically amount to push them back as far as you can, burn any corpses you find, and then burn wherever the hell they are to the ground, preferably with an orbital strike. It's not subtle, it's not pleasant, but it usually gets the job done, and at least buys your planet a long time. Because you know, it always takes an orc population a while to build up, because as I say, if they've got to be fighting each other in order to grow, once you take out, and once you take out their war boss... The orcs will splinter and start fighting among themselves to, as to who gets to be the next war boss. So assassination missions are a very effective tactic against orc hordes because if you can take out their leader, that will buy you a lot of time while they have an argument over who's going to be the next one. By which I mean they kill each other until there's only one guy strong enough left who can basically go, right, it's my, I'm in charge now, I'm war boss. Um... 
you know, and, and they tend to have names. Like, you know, for example, we've encountered in various Warhammer video games, we've encountered uh, Warbo Warboss uh, Skull Smasher, uh, Warboss Gorguts, Warboss. Oh, what are some of the others. I think I've encountered Warboss Bone Crusher at one point, but anyway, you know, and. There's all kinds of utterly ridiculous things about the orcs, and they are they are a fun race from a lore point of view. I don't like playing as them personally in campaigns purely because, as I say, their tactics amount to get a whole load of cannon fodder together and just chuck it on the enemy. But yeah, you know, I I'm the kind of RTS player who, if I play it right, none of my troops die. Yeah, that that's if I'm playing perfectly. You know, as in get everything I possibly can together so that they're absolutely overwhelming and then lay down massive fields of fire so that I don't lose a single guy. There are some games where I can manage it. If I'm playing 40k as the Space Marines, I've usually got a pretty decent chance of pulling it off. I did manage to once play the entire Crusade of Dark... the entire campaign of Dark Crusade, all, albeit on easy, and not lose a single unit, which I was very proud of myself for that. Though... The method by which I did it was basically squad of terminators, squad of assault terminators, as many space marine squads as I can get, backed up with uh, as many tanks as I can get and as many uh, dreadnoughts as I can get, and then just march them at the enemy. You know, with as many heavy weapons as I can equip them with, and nothing can survive that. Nothing can even slow that down. You know, because as I say, I, I am very much a turtle and steamroller type of RTS player. But yeah, so the the orcs are probably the most violent race in the galaxy they're one of the most troubling if they can ever get their act together and actually work together to, to fight their enemies rather than each other but their enemies are each other that, that's the way orcs are made so the orcs are again one of the fairly old races in the galaxy and they're kind of crazy so who have I got left of the main lot to talk about uh, still got the Tyranid, still got... Still got the Dark Eldar. There's got to be more of them. There's at least the Tyranids and the Dark Eldar left to talk about. Uh, somebody in the comments section is, is going to have to remind me of, of, of who I've missed. Because I feel like there's more that I haven't talked about yet, but... Again, regardless, I haven't decided which race I'll talk about uh, in the next one of these. If you have any requests, comment section to go go. And um, yeah, any any 40k fans, try and remind me of some of the races that I haven't talked about yet. If I'm there's more, to t there's a lot more to talk about in the 40k universe. But anyway, either way, so that was a brief sort of overview of the orcs. So thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.